When it comes to building your gaming PC, the CPU and GPU are arguably the two most important in the whole build, and the two components many people will start and pick first. Getting a CPU and GPU that complement each other is hugely important, and the overall combo you go for will define the gaming prowess of your build moving forward. As GPU and CPU prices, for that matter, continue to fall, which ones should you go ahead and pick? Well, in this video, I'll be breaking down the best budget, mid-range, and high-end options, and talking about what makes my particular choices quite so good in 2022. Let's do this. I'm going to start off by walking through the budget options, move up to mid-range choices, and then to high-end build combos later on. Now, on the low end, the best CPU you can pick is Intel's new Core i3 12100 F. It's their entry level 12th Gen i3 that also doesn't have any graphics built in, saving you money, but of course we don't need that because we've got our dedicated GPU. With 4 cores and 8 threads, some great single threaded performance, and numbers that quite frankly knock AMD's counterparts out of the water, it's an awesome choice, and pairs up very well with a GTX 1650 Super or an RTX 3050. The i3 and 1650 Super are a great option if you want the most entry level combo that I would feel comfortable recommending. It will give you solid 1080p gaming performance at 45 to 100 frames per second, depending on the title. Fortnite, 100 FPS, no problem. Apex Legends, you should be able to hit a good solid 60 frames too. The 1650 is an awesome option, especially if you're upgrading an existing system, as it doesn't require any external power. If you want a massive performance bump though, you can go ahead and look at something like this, an RTX 3050. Once again, it pairs up incredibly well with the i3-12100F for our higher end budget pairing and provides standout 1080p gaming performance in excess of 60 FPS at high settings in pretty much every title out there. The 3050 and i3 is the best value combo on the market right now. Crucially, you also get support with this combo for ray tracing, not quite so much of a concern, but more importantly, DLSS. DLSS is of course NVIDIA's AI-backed resolution scaler that enables us to get more frame rate by rendering at a low resolution using AI to upscale, keeping the visual fidelity you'd get at 1080p or 1440p, but with the frame rate of like 720 or 1080p. Awesome to see. Both of these combos are very low power options. The 3050 and i3 can be comfortably run on a 550 watt power supply or above, making it awesome for budget gamers, as you haven't got to spend loads of money on a PSU, a case, or even a motherboard. Take a look at some of Intel's new B660 options, for example, or motherboards on the H chipset lineup if you're looking to expand this combo out into a full build. Budget gaming has never looked quite so good, and these two combos are awesome choices. An honourable mention goes to AMD's Ryzen 3 3300X. It doesn't perform as well as the new i3 chips, but you can pick up a motherboard for this CPU for as little as $45 or $50. Wow. You'll also get some good features at that price point too, so if you are on a really, really tight budget, I wouldn't fully recommend it, but do consider the Ryzen 3, especially for those cheaper motherboards. Final thing to note, if you are building with the new i3, make sure you pick up a DDR4, not a DDR5 motherboard, as that will make your memory much more expensive and is frankly not needed for the new i3 chips. Moving up to the mid-range of things, and the fight between AMD and Intel gets a little bit more tight. I recommend the i5-12400F an RTX 3060 as the best mid-range build combo on the market right now. The 3060 has phenomenal legs, phenomenal, phenomenal legs at 1080p, awesome, 100 FPS, ray tracing, like amazing, the 3060 is a great card, but it also provides you a nice bit of legway at 1440p, especially when leveraging Nvidia's AI DLSS resolution scaler. The 3060 is an all-round fantastic card, it does give you a nice performance bump over the 3050, as we discussed in a recent GPU comparison video. I'll link all the graphs for our testing today in the description below as well. 3060 and i5-12400F, you can't go much wrong, with plenty of CPU power in this nimble little i5. But what if you want some slightly higher clock speeds? You're into overclocking, and actually you want an AMD combo for your mid-range build. In which case, the Ryzen 5 5600X and AMD RX 6600T are also a great choice. One advantage of this combo is that you can actually go ahead and enable smart 
smart access memory. This is a memory technology that allows the CPU to tap into the GPU's memory, but it only works if you've got an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU. For titles like Fortnite, Valorant and Apex Legends, this latter combo excels more. The AMD cards are phenomenal for straight rasterization. So while their AI resolution scaler is quite a way behind Nvidia's and they lack really any good ray tracing technology at the moment, though that may change with the next gen AMD GPUs. If all you're after is straight raster, this is an awesome choice as well. And to be honest with you, it all comes down to which is going to cost you more money. Go for the better value combo in your area and latest pricing and availability for all the components we talk about today will as always be linked below. But what if that's just not quite enough power for you? You're not a mid-range user, you're a high-end builder. Well the high-end GPUs I'd recommend are the RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti. But which CPU should you go ahead and pair them with? Personally on the high end of the market I think Nvidia wins every time. AMD's 6900 XT can be a good shout if it's on a good offer but at this higher end price point I think Nvidia just have more well-rounded products. The 3080 can be comfortably paired with Intel's i7-12700K or even an i5 if you're just looking for gaming and after the best value possible while the 3080 Ti needs an i7 or an i9, the 12700K or 12900K. To be honest with you at this level your CPU choice is going to depend on your use case. The 3080 and 3080 Ti are awesome GPUs if you're looking to not only game at 1440p or 4k but also do some video editing, rendering, use Blender and in those instances the higher end CPU the better. If you're just looking to game the i5 you can just about get away with the 12600K but the 12700K is a much better option. On the very high end of things the i9 is obviously the fastest gaming CPU in the world right now but it's frankly overkill if all you're looking to do is play Forza Horizon 5 at 60 FPS. So to summarize you want an i7 and a 3080 but an i5 if you're on a budget you can just about get away with and an i7 12700K with a 3080 Ti. With all of our combos you can upgrade the CPU to an i5 from an i3, an i7 from an i5 or an i9 from an i7 if you're looking to do more video editing where your CPU will become much more helpful. If you're looking to do more productivity oriented tasks, rendering, streaming, editing, go for that higher end chip. A couple of honourable mentions go to the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, a great chip that you can find for a really good value price point right now, and it's fantastic if you already have a Ryzen build. You can simply upgrade the BIOS with your existing CPU and pop this in. You may not need to change your memory or your motherboard, saving you lots and lots of cash over picking up a $200 Intel motherboard or maybe even more. Your CPU and GPU choices are also going to be dictated by what you're looking for in a build. Here in the office we edit in DaVinci Resolve, meaning and the more GPU power we can get the better and we've found much better results with Nvidia's CUDA accelerated GPUs than we have some of the AMD counterparts. It all depends once again on what you're after and specifically the games you're looking to play but I hope these six or seven combinations help you when it comes to choosing your next gaming PC. If you enjoyed this video make sure to get subscribed thanks for tuning in and as always we'll see you in the next one.